Today, we're gonna test multiple barrel lengths for the 5.56 cartridge, everything from the 20 inch guy that you see here down to the seven and a half inch barrel. And you won't believe what we have found to be the most ideal barrel length. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms out here at Take Aim Training and Range here to bring a pretty fun and exciting video and we're testing, we're just having a little bit of an experiment out here. We're testing barrel lengths and velocities of a 5.56 cartridge. Everything from a Springfield Saint 7.5 inch pistol, Daniel Defense Mark 12 10.3 inch barrel. We've got the Mark 111 by PWS with an 11.8 inch barrel, the IWI Zion 12.5 inch, Daniel Defense M4A1 14.5 inch, two 16 inch boys, a LWRC IDI and a MCX. But we're gonna have another little uh, little experiment there too, so stay tuned for that. And then the Mark 12 with an 18 inch barrel and the Colt M16 with a 20 inch barrel. What I wanna see is if this PMC X-Tac 55 grain 5.56X is, well, I just wanna see what the different bullet velocities are that we are going to get. Now on the box, it does say that we have, where the heck is it? Right up front, great. It says that we should be getting around 3,120 feet per second muzzle velocity. Typically, whenever manufacturers of ammunition test their cartridges for muzzle velocity, it's usually out of a 24 inch barrel, however. So if that's the case with this, I'm not expecting to see 3,120 feet per second out of the M16, which is only a 20 inch barrel. But I do, I am curious to see what we're gonna get. I still, I am believing that we're still gonna get way above, well, maybe not way above, but above 3,000 feet per second. I wanna take a guess and say about a thousand feet per second difference between velocities, between the seven and a half inch barrel and the 20 inch barrel. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and make ready on the Springfield Saints. Start low, work our way up high, and uh, let's see what happens. So we're gonna be taking five shots through each gun and then averaging them out. Hopefully Matt here will be quick on the calculator. And uh, I like that you've already got your little tactical high-speed light hey, on. Man, you gotta be prepared. We might be filming our uh, next part to the pistol series here in a little bit, so you might wanna be uh, looking for that if you haven't seen it. All right, let's go ahead and start this off. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, cool. So shot number one with the seven and a half inch. Let's see what type of mm, velocity we get here. Shot one is 2201. No change. 2160. Shot three. 2149. Shot four is 2,229. Shot five is 2,174. So those are pretty low numbers, not as low as I was expecting. What was our average? Uh, 2,183 rounded. 2,183, that was our, oh wow, okay. So 2,183 feet per second. I'm curious though to see if adding a couple of inches is gonna make that much of a difference. So let's grab that 10.3 inch Mark 18. Next up is the 10.3 inch Mark 18. So let's go ahead and give it a shot here. Shot number one, 25.21. Shot number two, 25.55. Shot number three, 24.95. Shot number four, 24.97. And shot number five, 24.95. So right off the bat, I can already tell that we're several hundred feet per second quicker than the seven and a half inch. So unfortunately for a lot of you out there, those inches do matter. Uh, but with that being said, I think it's still very capable. Now, if you're also curious, what about adding a silencer to it? Will that add any type of muzzle velocity? Well, we've answered that question too. Go check out our video talking all about video games and silencers compared to real life. And we do just that theory and those tests. So yeah, there you have it. What was our average on this? 2513. 2513 compared to what was the seven and a half inch? It was 2183. 2183, so that's quite the difference. Now let's go ahead and bring out the PWS Mark 111 and let's see what an 11.8 inch will do. All right, the 11.8 inch here on the PWS Mark 111. Let's go ahead and take a couple shots. Shot number one, 2637, <laughs> already quite a jump. Shot number two, 2649, number three, Oh, looks like it was a duplicate, 2649. All right, shot number four, 
2634, and shot number five, 2652. All right, all those are pretty, pretty similar. Not, not too much deviation there, so that was pretty sweet. That is a smooth shooting gun too, and also too, it's a long stroke boy. So pretty cool. And how are we looking for an average on this guy, which we did see already, it is a little bit higher. As we increase in barrel length, we are going to increase in muzzle velocity. But how much was it? 2644. 2644. Awesome, let's go ahead and get the next guy out, the 12.5 inch. Next up is the IWI Zion pistol, which is a 12 and a half inch barrel. Let's take a look. Shot number one, 2846. Shot number two, 2788. Number three, 2796. Number four, 2744. And number five, 2771. We are seeing some pretty impressive jumps with only a few, with only a few inches in difference in length. I mean, we went from you know 2180 something, I think 2183 from the seven and a half inch. Now 12 and a half, which isn't even double that, is coming out significantly faster. That's that's saying quite a bit. I'm really curious to see once we get out to that 20 inch boy where we're where we're sitting with that. Where's our average on this guy? 2789. 2789. That's pretty impressive. Next up. 14 and a half inch M4. So we're gonna take a quick little break because I wanna discuss something that was kind of cool because a lot of you guys do ask, what is the optimum barrel length for an AR pistol? And so what we've got right here are probably some of the more common barrel lengths, 10.3, 11.8, and the 12.5 IWI Zion. The difference in velocities just from these two here is about 150 feet per second, give or take, and the same can be said from the difference between the 11.8 to the 12.5. That being said, if you're looking for an AR pistol and your whole goal is to try to maximize the effectiveness of that 5.56 cartridge, go with a longer barrel. <laughs> and less complete maneuverability and compact is what you're going for, then sure, you can make that compromise and go with a little bit shorter gun. I'm not here to talk about how great the Mark 18 is because as cool as it is, it's not the most efficient for the 5.56 cartridge. Obviously, we're going to see other guns a little bit later that are, uh, but if again, you're trying to maintain that little small guy, if you can extend the barrel just a little bit, obviously that 12.5 inch barrel means it does quite a bit for that 5.56 cartridge. So that right there, I think is a great do all, I guess you could say, you know, pistol in the AR world. So we'll leave it at that. Let's go ahead and move on to our next one, the 14.5. All right, the 14 and a half inch Daniel Defense M4A1 is classified as a rifle because this muzzle device up here is pinned and welded in place, giving that 14 and a half inch barrel the length needed to make it a 16 inch barrel which is the criteria needed in order to be called a rifle and manufactured as such which this one is all right so let's go ahead and take a couple shots with this guy shot number one 2785 shot number two 2738 <laughs> shot number three 2777 shot number four 2759 and shot number five, 27. 60. You know what's kind of funny? We did this twice. We did this twice because we couldn't really believe what we were seeing. We were like, okay, maybe that was just a weird group that we shot, those five rounds, because the difference between the 12.5 and the 14.5, we're not finding much at all here, uh, which is very strange. So it almost seems like the jump from a 12.5 to 14.5 is in this test, almost negligible. Um, once we've got the average here, what, what's our average? 2763. Which is less than the 12.5? Which is less than the 12.5. So we did this before. This is our second time testing the M4 because we just thought it was weird. We did it before and it did come out faster than the 12.5, but only by five feet per second. So. And the second group is 20 feet slower. And the second group is 20 feet slower. I am bamboozled. I am confusion on that one. We might have to come back to this. Let's go to grab the 16 inch and let's see if it's worth it. <laughs> Next up is the 16 inch MCX. Let's go ahead and take a couple shots with this guy. And just for fun, we're going to compare it to a 16 inch DI gun, the LWRCI, like I said in the intro, just to see if maybe different operating systems might, might give us different results. I don't know. It'll just be kind of fun to find out. Let's go ahead and take a couple shots here. All right. Shot number one. 2854, shot number two. 2886, shot number three. 
2856. Shot number four. 2855. Wow, that's really close. And then last shot number five. 2876. All right, so we're definitely starting to see an increase there with the 16 inch, that's for sure. Let's grab the DI and let's just see how those compare. All right, let's try out the 16 inch DI gun, LWRCI here. Let's go with it. Oh, ACOG is gonna make this funny. All right, shot number one, 2888. Shot number two, 2869. Shot number three, 2855. Shot number four. 2876, shot number five, 2875. So they seem pretty close. I don't think there's too much of a difference there, but uh, maybe we'll find out here in just a moment once we get the averages all averaged out. So what's our averages on the MCX? It's 2865. 2865, and for the DI? 2872. 2872, so not much. Seven different. Yeah, not much of a difference there. So in this theory, a short stroke piston gun compared to a DI gun, not much of a difference. It actually got a little bit less, uh, but yeah, not that big of a deal at all. All right, let's move on. Next up is the Daniel Defense Mark 12 with an 18 inch barrel, and we decided to bring out the 20 round mag for peak aesthetics, all right? So let's go ahead and take our shots with this guy here. All right, shot number one, 2980. Shot number two, 3008, nice. Shot number three, 3002. Shot number four, 2962. Shot number five, 3036. So we finally broke that 3000 range with the 18 inch guy here. So we're definitely starting to see that increase in velocity. And the difference that we're starting to see here, especially with a 55 grain projectile, that's the difference in defeating body armor is that that 3000 feet per second area there. Just remember velocity is what really does, uh, let's just say does hard targets in, all right? Stuff like that guy right there moving quickly. What's our average velocity? 29.98. 29.98. Oh, almost got the average of the 3000 feet per second, which I don't think we're gonna have a problem with the 20 inch M16, let's grab it. Now talk about peak aesthetics. That's it right there, baby. Oh man, that's awesome. Anyway, if you're into retro guns like I am, just go ahead and hit that like button or cool little experiments like this. Now we've got what the 55 grain 5.56 was pretty much originally designed for with this guy here. We're talking slow twist rates and long barrels, one in 12 twist on the 20 inch barrel. Let's go ahead and see what we get out of this guy here. Shot number one. 3,028, shot number two, 3,068, shot number three, 3,060, shot number four, 3,008, shot number five, come on, be fast. 3,095, hey, listen to me. There we go, so we didn't break the 3,100 mark or the 3120 that was said to be the muzzle velocity on the actual box. But again, like I said, if they actually test their guns utilizing a 24 inch barrel, those again, additional four inches added to the barrel due to pressures and the way, well, ultimately all this is designed would definitely force that projectile a little bit faster out the gun. What's our average? 3052. 3052. So that's obviously the fastest. And now let's go ahead and get the guns right all back up here. And let's talk a little bit all about in conclusion here. So I thought this was pretty cool. Comment down below if you guys enjoyed today's video and let's go ahead and go over all the numbers really quick because some of these kind of blew my mind a little bit. So 3,052 feet per second out of the 20 inch M16. 2,998 2 average out of the 18 inch. 16 inch was negligible between the two different operating systems. So with the DI gun, it was 2,872. With this one here, 2,865. The 14.5, uh, 2,793 feet per second were our first run. And then our second run of five rounds was at 2,763 feet per second, which really blows my mind because it was somehow slower than the 12.5, which had an average of 2,789 feet per second comparatively to the second run. What, and now this is just my mind. I'm no engineer, obviously. But what do you guys think caused this? In my mind, what I'm thinking is, I know that these guys have a little bit larger gas ports in them, a little bit larger gas openings. I'm wondering if it's bleeding off 
enough gas to make the gun cycle like DIs do, so much so that it's actually not pushing the bullet out far enough, or I should say not pushing it out with enough force to increase its muzzle velocity all that greatly. I can't imagine that it's bleeding off that much gas to make this thing cycle that it actually slows down the projectile. But I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with the dwell time, which is the time that it takes the bullet to pass from the gas block out the muzzle. Again, I'm no scientific expert on this. I think guns are cool. I think that having this explosion go off by your face and it somehow be safe is pretty neat. Uh, but at the end of the day, I have questions. One of you guys smarter out there, smarter than me out there, please answer that. The 11.8 inch, we're looking at 2,644 feet per second compared to the 10.3, which is at 2513, compared to our slowest, which was 2,183 feet per second. So the 2,183 I said that I was expecting maybe even a thousand foot per second velocity difference between the M16 and the 7.5 inch Springfield Saint. We got close, but not quite. Again, 2183, 3052. So pretty interesting day. And like I said before too, if you're curious if by adding a silencer, which we have heard uh, on different ways, different social media, that even adding a silencer could actually increase the velocity uh, so much so that well just go watch the video let me put it that way again it's all about comparing video game silencers to real life silencers and do they actually add that much velocity to the gun that you added on go check it out it's pretty fun now before we close this video i've got one other gun that i want to test the velocity on so let's try it oh it actually picked it up and it only says 2486. <laughs> oh, yeah, I definitely needed to double up on those. 2486 feet per second. I was expecting like a lot. Well, then again, it's only the 20 inch barrel. So. I mean, 2486 with like a 600 grain bullet. 660 grain. Yeah, yeah, there's a little bit of a difference. Oh, let me just go ahead and uh, show you guys what that looks like. So, this is our current giveaway, the Barrett M82. That right there is the 50 BMG versus the 556 that we were shooting all day today. So, uh, yeah, either one would suck to get hit with. I can at least say that. But anyway, head on over to classicfirearms.com to get your entries in for this guy. It is a legendary rifle, obviously. We're also giving away, uh, in conjunction with our footage coming out about SHOT Show. SHOT Show is live, and so make sure you're caught up and checking out all of that video that's coming out. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be a good time. I already know it. So anyway, head on over to classicfirearms.com. Get your entries in for the Barrett 50 Cal. Utilize the code word SHOT to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries. I'll see you guys down in the comments section all about today's video, bullet velocities, and of course, barrel length. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. And we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.